Isaiah 40, uh, 17, 18, All nations before him are as nothing, and they are counted to him less than nothing, mm. and vanity. Mm. To whom they will ye liken God, mm. or who, or what like, likeness will ye comprehend unto him, mm. compare unto him? He's saying, who can you liken God to? God says you cannot liken him to anything else. There's some people when they want to give the uh, the definition of the Trinity, they use examples with maybe people or men, water, for example, and things like that. But those are just examples. That is not who God is. They just to help us understand better, you know. But they don't even do a good job in explaining. Because you can't like and go to anything. You can't you can't comprehend him with your with your with your with your fallen mind. Mm -hmm. Truly who he is. And that is not to disapprove him or to say that he does not this does not make sense. That actually proves that he is God because you can't actually put it in your mind. Okay. So if you get yourself into a place where you can't explain the Trinity. Relax, take it easy. Even God says you can't explain it. When you have a stress, when you have a stress, yes. I have a stress, for example. Yes, I can, I, can, I, can, I can use analogies to explain the Trinity and things like that. But sometimes I just say some, something as simple as God is one in three persons. Now, if you don't understand that, if you want to fight with me, I have nothing else to tell you. Dr. Kakele, for three hours and I tell you, yes, just like I said, God is one in nature, in nature, and has revealed himself in three persons, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. First John 5, 7. So, you can't put God in a box. If you can't explain him, yo, see, you believe. Yeah. If there's anybody else who wants to believe, they should just believe just like you. And maybe God will give us the privilege of knowing Him later on in a deeper, in a deeper way. He says what? For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. Now, so this, if you have a better way to explain this better without getting into heresy, please do. But I'd recommend you just leave it like that. Yeah. Three in one. Do you have three gods? No, we have one God. Do you have three gods? No, we have one God. In three persons. If you say you have three gods, that means they're different. Mm. One is maybe less a God, but the moment the moment they have one nature, is one person. Now, you want to explain that with so many analogies, that's your problem. But what I know is, even if you explain with so many analogies, your mind still cannot comprehend it. You, his thoughts are still higher than your thoughts. Mm. So it you still get you run into a problem and just have to believe that he is. Mm. Those who come to God must believe that he is. That's scripture. Those who come to God must believe that he is and is the reward of those who diligently seek him. The moment you accept that in humility, then God starts to reveal himself to you. Through his word, the moment you start reading his word, he reveals himself through his word. Somebody can open the book of Job chapter 9 verse 10. 19, 19. 10 to the care. When I talk to someone, mom. Read it. So, so you, what, what you want to do is, you want to start with Job chapter 9 verse 10. So that at home when you will seek. Yes. And it says he performs wonders that can't be formatted. Formatted. Yes. Formatted. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. There are miracles that can't be counted. Yes. And <laughs> the end. The end. <laughs> yes. Now if that if that was not enough that God performs miracles that you cannot even fathom. He he performs things that you cannot even uh, comprehend. Uh, comprehend. If that verse is not enough, and is going to read another one. <laughs> to seal it off. Yes, seal it off. Canst thou, by searching, 
Job chapter 11 7 Okay, Jimmy. Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? Up to ten. Oh, <laughs> up to ten. What uh, is it from Romans seven? Canst thou by searching find out God? Canst thou find out the Almighty unto perfection? It is as higher as heaven. What canst thou do? Deeper than hell, that canst thou know. Yeah, verse 9. The measure thereof is longer uh, than the earth, the border than the sea. Verse 10. If he cuts off and shut up or gather together, then who can hide hinder him? Amen. Mm. <laughs> Keith wants to read it again. It's, it's called it's different. Kabisa. It's called different Kabisa because in the recent to be simplified. This is uh, an old English. Whatever is different than ATB. No, no, because uh, the point is, he's trying to make a case that you, you can try as much as possible to put God in your thought so that you figure him out and you believe. But that is not the point. You must come in faith also. So, does not also mean that God has left you without, without explaining to you who he is. He has. That is all you have. I mean, you have six books explaining who God is. Man. From Genesis 1, in the beginning, God. That is the way he opens. Listen to the way he closes. He starts, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. This is the way he closes. The, say, the final chapter, the final chapter, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. It starts with God, finishes with God. Because we just established that Jesus is God. Yeah. <laughs> it starts with God. So, what do you think is in between? What? Harry Potter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, really? <laughs> <laughs> you think he's talking about David? David is, is, is the important figure. Or you, for example, the way there are some preachers who. When they are preaching, the preaching is always about the man. It's always about the man. Yeah, it's, it's about you. The Bible is about you. Be the David. Yeah, be, be the David. The, David. Yeah. the Bible is not about you. Shh. Go, go look for your your, your David or your Goliath. Shh. Do, do <laughs> you go find him. Really? <laughs> you, dude, you you are, you are, you are the Goliath, bro. <laughs> you are the Goliath. You're not the David. In fact, if you are anybody in the Bible, you're the losers in the Bible. Yeah, if, you're good, if you want to find yourself in the Bible, just look for the most treasured people in the Bible, that is you. The villains. The villains. <laughs> Ask me why. Okay. <laughs> because the Bible says there's nothing yeah, good in yeah. you. You're completely wretched, you're a sinner, you deserve death, you deserve hell. There's nothing good in you. No, nobody has ever done good, no, not one. According to God's standard, nobody's perfect. All of us are falling short of the glory of God. All of us. So if you want to look for somebody in the Bible to inspire you, don't look at the David who killed Goliath because he did. That was God. Yeah. Look at the David who slept with, 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 with somebody's wife. Now that is you. Yeah. yourself in those shoes. Yes. Yeah. Perfect. If you want to fit yourself in the, in the book of Genesis, don't look at Nani in the cool of the day with God. Look at him the e fruit. eating the fruit. Yeah. The fruit. Disobeying God. Yeah. Or hiding from... In fact, <laughs> Look at Adam and Eve hiding from God. That is you. Where you at, bruh? Ah, you know, I don't know if this is a good time, bruh. Like, I don't know, man. Like, catch your pleasure, right? And God is like, you know, I'm here. That is you. If you want to find yourself in the Bible, look at the most wretched person. Because if you cannot put yourself in the shoe of the most wretched person, then you're proud. Then you think you're good, and you can't prove it. You can't. No human being. They always say in the Book of Romans that is why the law was written so that all mouths can be stopped before God. In other words, so that nobody can claim that they have a, they have an advantage standing before God. All of us have seen. All of us have fallen short of the good of God. Nobody can claim that they are perfect before God. No, not one. In fact, it says, in fact, no, no one that do it good. No, not one. No. Open the book of Romans chapter 5. 
Yeah. Plus one. And yeah. then you, uh, to, we run diagnosis. <laughs> Romans chapter five. Romans chapter five. Uh, read from one. The kumbi malutachi. Well, anzia kutoka one. Ata ata malizia kumbi Uh, Romans 5. See 5. Yes. Uh, being therefore justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Though, uh, uh, though whom, through whom we also have our access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we rejoice in hope for the glory of God. Verse 3. Not only this, but we also rejoice in our suffering. Mm-hmm. Knowing that suffering worketh works perfect uh, perseverance, mm-hmm. and perseverance uh, proven a uh, proven character, mm-hmm. and proven character hope. Verse five. Mm-hmm. Take it slow. And hope mm-hmm. does not disappoint us, mm-hmm. because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, whom we give, who was given un, uh, to us. Mm-hmm. Verse six. For while we were yet weak, at our right time, uh, Christ died for the ungodly. Mm. Did for me? <laughs> the ungodly. Me. Exactly. For the ungodly. In other words, without God, completely rebellious to God, the one who ran away from God, not the one who goes to God, the prodigal son who went away. The father is the one who runs to the prodigal son, by the way, yeah. if you notice. What <laughs> if the father did not run towards the son? And the son, at this point, the son was feeling condemned for what he had done. Of course, he, rightly so, he was supposed to feel like that. He was a terrible person. But what if the, son, the father did not run towards him? Do you know what he was intending to do? In fact, maybe I can't think about it. I can't think about it. This is too embarrassing. Or, he could have gone with this in initial intent, which was, yeah. let me be a servant in my father's house. Let me be the least one there. That is the same same story that is happening right now with Amosh, by the way. And I did a, and I did a certain episode and put the link on the description. I put um, an analysis from a Christian perspective of what is happening to Amosh right now, mm-hmm. which he was totally hopeless. He had no hope. He needed help. He was, uh, his family was suffering and things like that. And... You know, he did this interview and he was crying and he was weeping and he was asking people for help. And he was asking just for, even for 200 shillings a day, or to be in a particular case, become a driver somewhere. In other words, he had no hope at all mm-hmm. until people came to his aid. Mm-hmm. And now they're building him a house, they've given him a lot of money, shopping, everything. Things are coming his way in Pakami when I'm jealous. So I feel like you're being like. Like, hey, I'm here, man. I've been this good, but that is the story of grace. That is our story. Anybody who looks at your motion says, This guy does not deserve this. Guess what? That's you. That's you. You don't deserve the grace of God. You don't deserve the love of God. You don't deserve Him giving you all the blessings and the spiritual blessings that He gives you. You don't deserve the home He's building for you in heaven. You don't deserve His grace. You don't deserve nothing that God gives you. Nothing. The Bible says that all good things come from God. It is the goodness of God. I've, 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 I've done an analysis of that, so you all can go watch the video. But while we were yet sinners, in due time, God died for the ungodly. Yeah. Can you imagine this? A book read up of Chini. There's, there's something interesting coming up. In the day, I'm gonna, uh, yes, in the day. For while we were yet weak, mm. at the right time, at the right time, mm. Christ died for the ungodly. Mm. Verse 7. Yeah. For rarely yes. does one die for the righteous. Rarely, in other words, if somebody was to die for the righteous, it, it, it is a rare thing. Verse 7, verse 10. For rarely does one die for the righteous. Yet perhaps for a good person, someone might dare to die. Yes. Yeah. Like, like if this person is totally terrible, you won't die for that person. In fact, you hate them. You wanted them to die. Instead of you dying for them, you want them to die. But now he says also, for um, now that is you and me probably, you know, the way we measure ourselves, we're like, it's you Even that, 
I don't know, but okay, maybe I don't know. Yeah, uh -huh. right there. Yes. Might, might there. I know, might, might or might. We, we don't know. At this point, we really don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, yet, perhaps for a good person, someone yes. might dare to die. Mm -hmm. Was it? But God commands His own loved love mm -hmm. towards us. Yes. In that, while we were yet sinners, yes. Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ. That is when Christ came and died. Mm. Yes, and relax on what to cover. Verse 9. Verse 9. <laughs> yeah, Romans, Romans 4, verse 9. Mm -hmm. uh, 5. 5, 5. Uh, 5, verse 9, mm -hmm. and then continue. Mm. Since we have now been justified by His blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through Him? Verse 10. Mm. For it, when we were God's enemies, mm. we were reconciled to reconciled. Him. Reconciled. Reconciled mm. to Him. Mm. Mm, to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been given, reconciled, shall Recon we, mm -hmm. we reconciled? Mm -hmm. Shall shall we shall we be saved through his life? Read read that part again. For for if mm -hmm. we were God's enemies, yes. we were reconciled to reconciled him. To we were him. reconciled to him mm -hmm. through the death of his son. Yes. How much more? Have we been reconciled? Uh -huh. Shall we be saved through his life? Yes. He's saying, listen, while yeah. we are still enemies with God, he gave us his son. While we were still enemies, yeah. now that we didn't approach him for reconciliation. You know, like you have an enemy and then you want to forgive them, but you're like, until yeah. but well, at that point, this person is your enemy, like he's the one who's done you wrong. You have not done anything wrong. In fact, all you've done is good all this while for this person. But while at that point, that is when he came and died for you. How much more, how much more will you be saved in the last time? Kama saizi, listen, listen. Kama saizi, saizi, when you were a sinner, he died for you in that state. Now that you've been saved by his son, Jesus Christ, you're born again. How much more when you stand before him in the last day will you be saved? Now that you are righteous before Christ. How much more will he save you? How much more will, be, will you be like, this is mine in heaven during judgment now? When everybody's, how much more then when you've been reconciled with Christ, when you stand before God, how much more will he save you then? I, I, I don't know if you get what I'm trying to say. When we were yet sinners and enemies with him, he saved us then. Yeah. And he said, come here. Receive this, come, you're mine. Now, we are on earth right now. How much more we now will stand before him to be saved now to eternity? Keep reading. Yeah, chapter 11. Not only, is, not only this is so, but we also boast in God, in God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Through him who we have now received reconciliation. Yes. Through sin and and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. Yes. But in, to be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given. Yes. But sin is not cha changed, mm -hmm. charged mm -hmm. against anyone's account mm -hmm. where there is no law. Mm -hmm. Chapter 14. Nevertheless, death resigned from time of Adam to the time of Moses. Yes. Even over those who do, who do not sin by breaking a command, mm. a command as as did Adam, mm. who is a pattern of one to come. Yes, he's trying to say, sin has always been there ever since Adam. Even before the law came through Moses, sin was still there. The law just came to reveal what sin was, to tell us now this is what this is. Since Adam, sin has always been residing in us. So that is that is how far we've been enemies with God ever since the beginning. So at this point, you're like, how patient is God? How, I mean, how how patient is he? If sin has been all that while and he's never he's never decided, you know, what is not worth it. In fact, every single day that you sin shows the patience of God. Because if the wages of sin is death, then he should have paid you a long time ago. In fact, he should pay you immediately. When somebody works, when they finish the work, they get paid. Yeah. Yes. When you finish your work, you get paid. That's why every single month you're supposed to be paid. Because you finish the work for that month. 
right? Now, there are people who are paid every week, but the people who are paid every day, it depends on your contract. But when you finish the work, according to the agreement, is when you finish the work, you get paid. So if your work is done uh, per week, per week you're supposed to be paid. Why do you call it late payment? Maybe they be delayed. Yes. Now, you, when you stop sinning, that's when you're supposed to be paid. Did he pay you then? All this while you've been sinning, has God ever paid you? Because you should have been dead and been held. That is why the patience of God, the patience of God, is not does not mean that he con he, he, he not punishing does not mean that he condones. It means he's patient. Slow to anger. Yes, slow to anger in abundant in grace in mercy. Mm. Amen. Mm. So God in a, the, that's why the Bible says in the book of uh, Acts that in the days of old God overlooked God winked on. But now he's calling every man to repent. Mm. Because he is, this is the reason why he's calling every man to repent. The Bible says, because he has appointed the man Jesus to judge the world. Now he's decided, now judgment is coming. For all laws, for all unrighteousness, lawlessness. Now I have appointed my judge, Christ Jesus. He's going to judge. So, because of that, repent and believe in him. So, judgment has come. Through Christ Jesus. That is what we read earlier on in the book of John chapter John chapter three verse uh verse sixteen. John chapter three. Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. For God did not send his son. That is after John three sixteen, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you all know that. John chapter People 3, never look past that. Yes. <laughs> so I want you to say it with me. John chapter three sixteen. You just say it and then to Kimaliza. You pick it from there, as the scripture says. Because Nigeria is in Namibia, called Abjasika. Abjasika is in Namibia. So we can all say, it. "For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life." Amen. 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 Amen.
If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. What is he trying to say? I am the Father. No, 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 no. Not I am the Father. He says, the, the, the Father is there, but he's saying, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yes. Yes, exactly. In other words, I'm I'm, I'm, refl I'm reflecting. Yes, yeah. I'm, I'm, my nature, <laughs> the nature that the Father has, is also in me. I am. That's why. He, that's why he tells the uh, the uh, the Pharisees that before Abraham was, I am. Yeah. Moses was told that, who will I tell the children of Israel sent me? Tell them I am. The I am sent you. Jesus comes and says, I'm the I am. Now Jesus is not the Father. The Father is not Jesus. Yeah. Jesus is our God. Yes. Jesus is God. Now, it may take you 20 years to fully understand that. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Yes. God lived for 33 years only. It's on earth. 33 years. It's on earth. 33 years. So you have the entire inter eternity to comprehend who he really is. So relax, take it easy. Amen. So, uh, let us pray. <laughs> let us pray. Our Father, we bless you this wonderful day, Lord, for giving us the opportunity to hear your word, to do your will, and to love you. We bless you for the gift of salvation. We bless you for the gift of your word. We bless you, Lord, for the gift of uh, friendship and for the gift of eternal life. Even as we have discussed your word, Lord, may your blessings stay with us. May your love stay with us. Let your glory be seen. Let your glory be known in us. And help us to walk the narrow way. Help us to walk the righteous way. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for Andy and for Keith for listening to me. And I pray, Lord, that you may reveal yourself in them. And reveal yourself in them. And you may show them the right way to walk. I bless you and you, Lord, in Jesus' name.